Since I was a kid growing up in Missouri, I spent a lot of time in the outdoors and became pretty familiar with the wildlife we had here. Although there was one animal I didn't know we had living in Missouri, the black bear. And you're never too old to learn more about the outdoors. Although black bears aren't as common in Missouri as they are, say, in the Rocky Mountains, the population is slowly growing for Missouri. And we had the chance to join the Missouri Department of Conservation on the Missouri Black Bear Study. So we met up with Jeff Behringer and his crew in the beautiful Ozark County. And let me tell you, these guys have been working so hard on this study since 2010, trying to determine the current number of black bears, their growth rate, and how many males there are versus females in southern Missouri. When they first started this study, they did a population estimate using hair snares and determined that they had 280 black bears at that time. They finished that study in 2012 and moved on to the next part. When we first arrived, Jeff had already had the bear in the live trap. He was able to give him the tranquilizer and after about 10 minutes, we were able to unload the bear out and start the analyzation process. First off, Jeff places drops in the bear's eyes because when they're out and under the drug, they can't blink. And it's also best to cover the bear's eyes as they still have some sensation of what's going on. Measurements are taken of each individual bear to verify the sizing of each one. A cool fact about this specific bear was that these guys caught and tagged him back in 2011. I was pretty interested in all this bear trapping, but I wasn't the only one. These three boys were so excited to see how everything was done and were great helpers. While the bear is still under pretty good, Jeff pulled his canine to help determine his age. They aged him around six years old. Now the average longevity of a wild American black bear is around 20 years old. As we continued to work, the next step was everyone's favorite, pulling off the oversized ticks. We had three different sections we had to work on and had to pay close attention to the area we were pulling off ticks and account for each one we pulled off. I even joined in on the fun. It might have been a dirty job, but someone had to do it. Now these ticks were kept in a vial to see what kind of diseases they might have. And this bear had no idea just how much attention he'd be getting that day. Next we moved on to the BCI. And the BCI stands for Body Condition Index. It tells how much fat is actually on the bear. This bear's BCI was just a little bit low. Bears can weigh anywhere from 200 to 600 pounds, and this specific one weighed in around 233 pounds. A little lean, but our biologist wasn't too concerned because he said bears aren't spending a lot of time eating right now. Bears are omnivores, and they can eat meat, but are typically eating berries, acorns, insects, and even some grasses in the springtime. Feeding the trap is pretty simple because bears aren't too picky about what they eat. This looks like some lemon cake and we have donuts and they're <clears throat> our local grocery store, Town and Country Supermarket in Gainesville is uh, they're generous enough to, to donate this stuff. They were going to throw it out anyway and mm -hmm. the bears love it. So Awesome. That's what we bait with. So what happens is we tie this bag on. This is this releases the trigger here. It won't come down now, but and he tugs on the bag and trips the trigger and the door falls down. That's the idea. You can see that they just tore the bag right in two on that one. As we were just finishing up, we noticed our bear starting to open his eyes and move his tongue around. But don't worry because he was still plenty out of it. After the bears go down, they'll stay out for about two hours before they get up and start moving around again. We asked Jeff. What can the public do to help? The most important thing that people 
need to think about in Missouri is, is this something that we just call bear awareness and you need to recognize that a lot of the things you do, do you leave your dog food on the, on the porch, do you put your garbage out the night before, do you store stuff on your back porch that might be food. If you do that kind of stuff you are inviting a bear to come into your backyard and, and, and you don't want that and neither do we. We don't want the bear to get into a conflict with you so you need to be bear aware, keep these things away so the bear can't find them. If he never has any reason to come in your yard for food, he's not going to come in your yard. Right. And if they do, make it a negative experience for the bear. Throw stones at him, shoot up in the air, scare him away, and keep him wild. We asked Jeff if poaching was a concern in their study. If poaching is a, is a factor that we're concerned with. I don't know the level of poaching that we have here in Missouri, but we do have our bears uh, chipped in a way that we can tell if they've been poached or not and that will help us discover this but you know if folks can be patient we'll have a regulated legal season where everyone will get a fair chance. We're just trying to grow the bears until we get to that time when we think we're ready for a season. You know it's not every day that you get to hang out with black bears in Missouri. The experience was a great opportunity to learn more about these animals that are somewhat newer to Missouri. If you're interested in finding out more about the Missouri Black Bear Project, please be sure to check out their website. And once again, they ask that you please do not feed those bears. If you come into contact with them, let the Missouri Department of Conservation know. We want to give these guys a special thank you for all their hard work and efforts in conducting this study, because without their knowledge, we wouldn't know all that we know today about the bear population in Missouri.